Hello again guys, it is Fake Hero coming at you with another Legends of Rune Terror video and today I'm going to share uh, something a little bit different. That is a mirror matchup that I had earlier today on stream. Now as there was audio playing because I was listening to some fresh music, I'm going to have to do a live commentary over the game. I think this could be interesting though because it definitely will give a different aspect and view to some of the decisions that were made and you may be able to learn something not so much seen when you uh, play the game kind of on the spot. So enjoy the clip, uh, leave a comment, subscribe if you have time, and maybe I'll see you soon. Peace. All right, so as we start off this game, I already, I'm already i already aware that it's an Endure Spiders uh, mirror matchup, so I'm not exactly looking forward to this. I basically keep the glimpse and I'm pretty much looking for as much card draw or as much valuable tools to the combat that we'll need. It's gonna be pretty much who gets their endure first, right? That, that's that's how I feel, at least. It might not be the case, though. Uh, you're going to see a lot of turns throughout this game, too, where we just afloat mana and honestly don't do a lot. So that is purely because just trying to gain as much value from every single card as I can. And that includes not swinging here, because if I swing here, he gets the chump block with the omen hawk, which I don't want. So I decide not to swing and I'm just going to kind of play these Avervosian sentries as these first few turns progress uh, as well as pretty much looking for opportunities to play Glimpse. Um, a spoiler alert, at one point in this game you're going to see, I think it'll be about five or six turns of just no swinging, neither player does anything. Actually that may have been a different game, sorry. I think I, that may have been a different game. I had a game, another Endure Spiders mirror matchup, and there was a lot of just nothing, nothing happening. That game wasn't as interesting. Uh, so he goes for a glimpse here. Unfortunately, I have no way to stop that from happening. I consider whether or not, for a moment, I would glimpse myself to guarantee the card draw, but I figure I want to try and get as much value from it as possible. So basically, when he tries to Vile Feast one of these units, that's my opportunity to do it. Um, this Frenzy Skidder, uh, spoiler alert, does not get dealt with for quite a long time and it deals quite a bit of damage to me. But I never panicked, I was never worried because I figured the part I should panic is just probably when the inevitable Endure comes down that's 20 uh, hit points in attack so it doesn't matter. I'm pretty much, for me, I'm looking for the uh, They Who Endure to be at 20 before I even play it or even consider it. I open swing here, just to kind of see how he reacts. We've got flexible moves. I'm sure he has very similar moves. I suspect a withering whale. I wouldn't be too shocked. Uh, I forget what happens here. So we're withering whales. Cool. This obviously goes through. My first play would jump to would be Broad Awakening, right? So that should be the play that we make. He drops the Aristocrat. Uh, I go for the Crawling Sensation here first, so I can follow up with the Broad Awakening above it just to get the extra value. As I said, we're trying to get as much value from every single card as possible. I hover the Crawling Sensation. I would not play it here. That would be because I missed out on a unit, and again, it all comes down to pushing as much value as possible. We end the round. Okay, I think I have enough mana. Yeah, yeah, so I set it up so that if he... Well, obviously he swings first, which is good. You'll see, yeah, this Frenzy Skidder just went to town on me. Pretty much my first go-to play would be if he Withering Whales my board, I would double Withering Whale him at that point. He doesn't respond with anything, so I throw it back for a moment. It comes back to me. We float a lot of mana, does not matter. Uh, they who endure astrocity are in hand. I'll try and do something a bit weird here. My idea is that I'm going to attempt a double withering whale and try and swing a lot of damage to his face. This is probably a questionable turn here and as I'm watching it now I wonder if this is even correct. And on the other hand too because my hand's quite heavy I need to start playing some cards. 
And if he plays a Broad Awakening at any point, that's going to stink. So now I've opened him up for a Ruination here. This is a pretty like questionable Ruination though, because he knows obviously he needs to play around uh, Endure. If I'm in his shoes though, I probably consider it. I'm pretty sure there's a Withering Whale here. Yeah, this is fine. What ended up happening here is that I did the same play happened, but now we got to basically play this and do it for free. This is a pretty questionable part of the game. So this is a very important part of the game. He is on the front foot. So he tempers out at a day who would do it. I decided to go for a more slower play. Well, you won't see it right now, but as the turns progress, I decide to play more slower. For some reason, I'm still not scared yet. Like he could have a strosity and the game's over though, but that's a one of card that most likely he probably didn't keep it. I mean, I don't know if you keep Astrocity in your opening hand ever, because you wouldn't keep Endure in your opening hand ever. I tried to look for productive tools, so he kind of went for the more tempo-sided play. So he played a bit faster this game. But he has the right hand for it. And that Trinomy comes down, that's kind of scary. Obviously, we haven't got any real plays. I'm just going to hope that... um. I find a uh, time to play Astrocity. Me playing my 10-10 and do it here is for the chance that I could swing and find some a lot of damage. Okay, so there's the option of having played my other Endure and tried to swing face and then he may have played Ruination and then I would have followed up with Astrocity. But I'm just going to chill here. I figure I might just swing and deal some extra damage. So I'm gonna need to try and figure out a way to deal with this Trinomy. Obviously it's got the uh, last breath which will bring it back so that's kind of tough. I don't think it's directly last breath but when it dies it revives and levels up. Okay, so he plays the Thresh here, and now I'm worried because of its Challenger effect. I'm going to have to try and do something pretty crazy here. So I'm going to go super wide with Spiders. I'm kind of trying to bait him into some removal. Oh, what do I do here? Oh, that's right. I play, the, I play this Endure, because if I don't, there's a chance he can kill me next turn. So this is like the game changer right here. I'm freaking out dude, because he could play Ruination. I don't think I'm playing around it at this point. The good thing is, is that if he does Ruination, that I could at least play my Ice Veil Archer to target the Trindamir next turn. So that's the plan here. I'll play the Broad Awakening to flip the Elise in case he doesn't have uh, Ruination. And flipping the Elise might be important, okay? So keep note of that. Alright, so expecting the open ruination, I've got Astrocity ready. So this is obviously an ideal Astrocity. There's a moment here where I'm a bit concerned because I'm not sure how the uh, turns work. I sometimes get confused here and there. But inevitably, we're going to play Astrocity and we're actually given, obviously, another turn to play a unit because the yeah, Astrocity is a fast spell. So there needs to be a rule book for this game. Or I just need to start learning. I would go for the Astrocity so we can guarantee that damage. We actually run two copies of Astrocity in the deck. So for this, it's an easier decision to make. Trinomir flips. We play the Ice Veil Archer. There's an opportunity for me to glimpse here. 
is where pushing as much value from the cards means a lot. At this point I am a bit more concerned about HP because uh, even if the Trinomir dies and he doesn't find they who endure, he can just push chip damage and hit me with a, as a, a, a Vietnam flashbacks terms, hit me with an astrocity with one of the spiders. So he went super wide there. I'm like, okay, this is pretty much a ruination. I think I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm like thinking though if he plays minions afterwards. No, even more exciting. This is a game breaker right here. Now, is it lucky or unlucky? Don't say you look at it. We're gonna play Elise. They flipped Elise and we're gonna go wide on the board and we're gonna try and connect something to his face. Now I open up with the Elise first because I wanna see how he, he might respond. He plays they who endure, which means my ruination would have pretty much lost me the game. We've taken the correct line here. Because he played Dehu and Dua and he's down to 4 mana, we play Broad Awakening. Now don't, take note, we flip the Elise, our spiders have fearsome. So basically, we're gonna swing and hope that he doesn't have any random cards. Wild Feast wouldn't be enough here though. He would kind of need a mixture of Vile Feast and uh, Mark of the Isles, which I don't think we run in Endure Spiders. I do something weird here. I probably could have just gone in for the lethal, but I decided to card draw though anyway, because I still pretty much end up in the same spot. It's a bit weird that one. I think that was just kind of like an anxiety play where like, I still have the same chances, but I'm just gonna play an extra card anyway. Also, the glimpse kind of gives me hidden information that he may not have even had a uh, Vile Feast, which probably didn't make much of a difference anyway. The next play, I don't think it really matters too much here. I think maybe you're supposed to swing with the Elise last though. Because then it, he has to block like the uh, two ones to avoid taking the full damage to the face. But that was a really ridiculous game and I really wanted to highlight that one because I think there was a lot of weird decisions made between both parties which ended up taking us to a very strange situa uh, situation where we were playing uh, They Who Endures for Tempo. So kind of interesting one, definitely interesting one. Uh, I'd hate to play that mirror matchup again because I feel like we did kind of get lucky. But at the same time, both players made certain decisions in their game plan and uh, one of them just managed to pay off.